how's it going? I'm Casey Martin for Wine Country Woodworks, and this is going to be a video on dye stabilizing burl, specifically double dyeing and multi dyeing. I'm going to walk you guys through the process that I do. The way I learned was actually watching Zach Higgins' video on it, and I'll, I'll put a link in the top right of the corner and also down in the video description as well. And so that will be uh, kind of a good place to watch after this video or if you've already watched it then great this will be kind of additional stuff. I have a little tweaks on how I do it that I think are very beneficial. So anyway let's get right into it. So before we dive in I wanted to kind of give you guys a example of what I'm going to help everyone be able to make. So these are all either single dyed or double dyed, some of them even multi dyed. And what I mean by multi dye is just more colors than two. So I'm gonna walk you guys through the whole process. And all of these are sanded on the bottom. I'll show you guys why they, in my opinion, need to be sanded uh, during this process. But none of these are even finished. And you can see how vibrant these colors are and how there's multiple different colors in them. And you know, even some of these, these thicker pieces I can get good penetration with the method I'm going to show you guys. So just wanted to give you guys a little preview and let's get right into it. I'll also throw up some photos really quickly of pen blanks with these type of burls in them so that you can see how they look when they're, they're finished. And it's really, really a great addition, I would say, to casting that kind of opens up the realm even more to all these different type of possibilities. All right guys, so as you can obviously tell, this is my stabilizing area. And I'll kind of walk you guys through what I'm doing at the beginning of this process. If I'm going to try to dye stabilize in more than one color, what I'm going to do is use one of these cups and they have different colors. I have a purple, a green, a blue, a red, an orange. Um, I also have the ability to make yellow and other colors in the futures if I'd like to. But these are the main colors I have right now. And this method, this part of the method is very similar to Zach's in that you can just put them in the cups and let capillary action do its trick in that it'll soak into the bottom piece of the wood and you'll get that color obviously where it's soaking but also as far as the capillary action will pull the resin into or the stabilizing resin up into the wood. Now what I do and I'll give you guys a close up in a bit is I will take these and since I have the ability to with the vacuum chambers that I have is I will put them into the vacuum chamber and pull vacuum so that even though they're soaking the part that's being soaked is actually having the air pulled out of it like traditional stabilizing so let me give you a close-up of that now so all I just did is put the cup with uh, this is a piece of Buckeye burl actually for this demonstration that we're uh, dye stabilizing. It's already actually had green soaked into it and now we're doing some red. Uh, green and red look good together. But anyway, all we did is we, we put the cup into this vacuum chamber. Any vacuum chamber that is basically not you know, uh, too too small of an opening for them like those or the turn text ones probably won't work. And I can actually fit this cup and two of these or four of these um, at the same time if I want to. And so I am just trying to talk before I turn on the vacuum because we won't be able to uh, hear anything after that. But you guys can see that the wood doesn't need to be completely submerged because all we care about is a certain portion of the wood getting dyed. So let's do that now. So just like normal stabilizing, you would want to make sure that this stays soaking uh, once you're done actually pulling the vacuum for a while. I would recommend at least 24 hours, you know, so I normally will do this in the day and then let it soak overnight and take it out. Obviously longer doesn't hurt, it might help. And also I wanted to be clear and mention that you can just let them sit in, in cups like this and soak. That's the way Zach does it and it works great, he gets good results too. But with this, I believe you get much better penetration for the parts that are soaking and being pulled. As you guys could see, there's a lot of bubbles coming out, which wouldn't happen if it was just sitting out here. The other option that you can do is use uh, these little dye drops or, or eye, eye droppers really, or you know whatever you wanna call them, these little vials. Um, 
and you can fill them up with your own dye and you can you know do tons of different colors and, and pin uh, point it but I, I think this is a really good way to get a lot of good penetration that's not going to get the best the other thing that I do once this is all done is I cook them obviously right because we want that to cure in the wood and once that is done uh, I'll show you guys the next step. So after you've done your first co color, this is an example of a piece of grapevine. I have a couple of them that actually fell into the red. And so this has only had red dye in it. And if you look at it, um, it had a couple drops of blue dropped onto it, but it looks great, right? But the reason why we want to sand right now is so that we can see how well the first color actually penetrated. So we're going to sand uh, this little area right here and see if we just take off this outer layer, if there's still red down underneath. So on a regular shaped pieces like this grapevine, it's hard to do this without uh, showing the, the trace of it. But you guys can see right here that by taking a little bit off, the red actually doesn't penetrate all the way through. But you can see that it does penetrate a little bit. So what we would do with this piece, if we wanted to incorporate another color, is we would lightly sand it. I'd probably have to hand sand it so to keep its shape and not really affect it too much. Then we would put it into one of the blue or the reds or another color, but we would completely submerge it like normal stabilizing completely submerge it, make sure the resin is above it, and then put that under vacuum. The second step has to be put under vacuum, in my opinion, for really good penetration. Now, on this step, uh, most people are probably gonna be using normal pieces of, of wood, um, and so you just do this on the portion that is already cut, right? And then you're not gonna really affect anything because you really don't need to take a lot off. And if you're using um, the type of ovens that I am or my smoker down below that has a rack, which I would very much recommend using because uh, it'll get a lot of drips and then you can take it out. Um, and it's it's a lot easier to just let it drip dry like that than wrapping it up in tin foil. You're probably gonna get these little lines anyway, which you'd wanna sand off. So I usually sand off the sides that have them. You can see there's a little bit left over from when I sanded that. but that's what you can do and then you can see how much the color is penetrated you guys can see this one is really good so i don't really have to do anything more this was uh, purple that i did first and then red after that the other really important reason for sanding which is why even if i didn't want to have another color and just do this again in red is really important is because if you don't have the penetration all the way through which this one, it like I mentioned, they just fell in there without vacuum. And even though they were submerged, it, it didn't penetrate without vacuum, is you need to open up the pores so that the color that you're doing next can penetrate. Because if you don't, if you think about what cactus juice is doing, it's curing and it's sealing off the wood. And so if you sand it, you can kind of break into where it hasn't penetrated and then allow the new color to penetrate a lot easier. You probably still could get away with it to a certain extent, but if you want the best penetration, then I highly recommend sanding as well. Obviously, as I mentioned previously, you get the bonus of seeing how far it penetrated to. So definitely don't forget that step. I would say it's almost necessary. All right, everyone. Well, I really hope you enjoyed the video. So far, just a couple closing thoughts. You can do this process, uh, as Zach mentions in his video too, as many times as you want. So with a larger piece, like that Buckeye piece I was demonstrating with, you could do tons of different colors. You could very easily do two separate colors on the ends with the method I was describing with the cup under vacuum or even not under vacuum, although I recommend it, of course. And then you could put it into a third final color for the full submersion vacuum stage. And you could get three really cool colors. Uh, you know, on smaller pieces, it's really hard 
to do that method. You could, of course, do it. You would just have to kind of jerry-rig a system to only have it sit in a little bit or only use a little bit of resin, however you wanted to do it, but it is possible. I usually do two colors because I will just let them soak in the cups, and then once that's done and they're cured and I sand them, uh, I will put them into either the red or the blue. Right now, those are really the only colors that I do full submersion in because I think they're the most versatile. So the other thing I wanted to mention is that all of the links to the things that I use, like my vacuum chambers, the toaster oven, uh, the smoker, all of the stuff, um, you know, even the cups if you guys want, will be in the video description below. I also have a page on my website with all of the tools that I use in my shop uh, that'll also be listed down there for anything you guys are interested in. It's all in one place. So like the video if you guys liked it, subscribe to the channel. If I let anything out, please leave a comment down below asking a question so I can answer it there so anybody else that might have it can see that. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch it. I really appreciate it. Like I mentioned, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like it if you did. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.